Hi everyone and welcome back to another Argena layout. Today I'm going to create another flower page for my Year in Flowers Argena book. I already have the pages for the letter H and the page for the letter J. I'm going to take one of the pages out so that I can work on it. And uh, I have found this beautiful stamp set by Stampendus. I absolutely love their flower designs and this uh, stamp set is called Fuchsia Trio. Now there are two things that I absolutely love about Stampendus is that on their stamp sets you will find not only the stamps but also stencils and the stencils come both as the negative and the positive uh, design so you will be able to do both stenciling and masking. And if you decide to go with their dies, you will find out that they don't leave a white border around the cutout of the image. You will see that later on as I work with the dies. So first I'm going to create my background and uh, I have my 6x6 page uh, inside the box so that I don't make a mess on my craft room. And I'm going to spray with two Distress Oxide sprays. The colors that I'm using as are Spiced Marmalade and Picked Raspberry. These stress oxide sprays are uh, new to me and I absolutely love them. I can't stop playing with them. I love the subtle look that you get once everything dries so I don't end up with uh, super vibrant backgrounds that steal the thunder of my focal points. So now my background is nice and dry. I am going to add a little bit of water, splashes as well as spraying on top of it. This is going to react to the ink that I have already there. And uh, with a towel, I will be able to lift some of the color and get a lovely visual texture. I'm also going to add splashes with uh, the two spray bottles. Again, I'm not introducing any new colors. I'm using the two colors that I used in the beginning for my background. The paper that I'm working on is a watercolor paper, heavy watercolor paper, so it takes water and sprays beautifully and it doesn't warp on me. And again, before I move on to the next step, I'm going to quickly dry my background. And now I will do some stamping with my new colors of Archival Links. These are the exact same colors as the sprays that I used. So picked uh, raspberry and uh, spiced marmalade. And I'm going to stamp with this 6x6 rubber stamp. This has a beautiful design, perfect for backgrounds. And I will be working with that. You can of course completely cover it up with ink and just uh, stamp it directly on top. I decided to go only in specific areas. So you will see me uh, inking up uh, areas here and there with my two ink pads. Now as I'm doing that I want to let you all know that down below you will find the links to everything I'm using but keep in mind that uh, lots of products are currently on sale so the everything that has to do with stamping all the stamps that I'm using today are on sale as well as everything by Ranger. So check out the links and I hope you will find a great deal on something you want to buy. Now I did get a very subtle look of that stamping since I used the exact same colors as the background which is exactly what I was going for. Now I'm going to do some stenciling and I'm going to use this uh, grid uh, stencil that I have for years. I don't know if this is still available. If it is I will pop a link down below and I'm going to use some texture paste on top. I apply the paste with my spatula. I keep all the paste at the back of the spatula always and uh, I'm not trying to completely cover up the background. I'm just using areas of the stencil here and there on my background. The paste is uh, going to slightly react with the inks that I have underneath and at the finished page it's not going to look as vibrant and uh, super white as it looks now. Now it's time to do some stamping. For that I'm using black archival ink just to make sure that I won't uh, do any smudging and smearing later on when I go ahead and uh, color my images. I'm stamping a bunch of flowers and leaves to have enough for my page and uh, once I have everything down I will go ahead and color them. Now, just because I'm planning to color everything with my Big Brush Markers by Faber-Castell, I am going to first cover up completely all those uh, stamped images with matte medium. And I'm doing that because I will be able to smudge the color on top and create shadows. My brush is not dry at all. I'm just applying a thin layer of matte medium over the pages. 
when you are using a brush with uh, matte medium, make sure to dip it inside some water and then when you finish your project you can go ahead and wash it. This is going to make sure that it will remain wet and it's not going to stick. Now I'm using my heat gun to make sure that all those images are completely dry, otherwise if I go with my markers on top of them I will touch the matte medium and I will ruin my markers. So I'm going to bring in the markers now and I like to keep them vertically. I can see the colors from the side of the box and I have them for years, they never dry, dried out on me. They are quite expensive but if you take good care of them you will see that they will last you for a long long time. I am also having some washi tape around them and I usually get a lot of questions about that. This is just for my classes so that I can separate mine from the students. Here is an example of what I can do. This area is covered up with matte medium underneath and I can easily blend the color out. And uh, there is an area here at the corner without matte medium underneath and you can see that I cannot blend the color as much. Now the big brush markers are uh, permanent things so they will dry permanent after a few seconds but I do have a window of uh, smudging the ink before it completely dries. So I am going to do the coloring here, adding uh, the color at the base of the leaf and then smudging it with my finger towards the edge. I really don't care if I go outside the line since I will go and cut out all the images later on. Now you will see that once I'm uh, finished with the lighter color I will move on to a darker shade. And again I'm doing the exact same thing adding only at the base of the leaf or where the leaves are overlapping a little bit of darker shade and this is going to help all those uh, leaves to pop even more and it will give some dimension. I think this way of coloring is really satisfying and um, I absolutely love it when it comes to art journaling. And for coloring my flowers I use the exact same technique. Now you can use your scissors to cut around your images or you can use the matching dies. The great thing about Stampendous dies is that they don't give a white border all around which means that they are not going to look as stickers at the end. So I'm going to cut out the flowers too. And although there is no white border around you can still see the white core of uh, the paper at the edge. So I am going to use a marker and go all around it and I did that for all the cutouts. This uh, really makes a difference when you stick everything together. Now it's time to put everything together. I'm using matte medium to stick down my cutouts and in some areas I need to stamp stems that I haven't bothered to cut out. So this is what I'm going to do here. Again I'm using black archival ink. And I'm going to use my scissors to cut off all the excess paper. For the bigger flowers I also need to do some stamping before I stick them down. And I will repeat that for the other flower as well. Now I'm going to add some details with my acrylic paint. This is a paint pen by Dilusions and uh, the color matches perfectly the color of my flowers. So I'm going to draw some lines there. And I'm also going to use the white one to add some highlights here and there on the leaves and on the flowers. These are little details that I always like to do on my art journals. I think they give a more whimsical look and I absolutely love it. Now because I cannot have enough details on my pages I'm going to add some glitter dots. This is a product by Novo and it is called Glitter Accents and the color matches perfectly the color of my flowers. And there are so many other ways to embellish your flowers. You can uh, even use uh, little sequins instead of those dots that I am creating or even gems. Now I like to add motivational quotes on my original pages and uh, I will be using the word happy. This is an old stamp set that I have but I absolutely love. It's called big words happy and I'm going to combine it with a smaller word that says B.
Now, just like uh, I did for the rest of uh, the pages for this art journal book, I have printed out the definition of uh, these flowers and uh, I decided not to use the letter F. I will not be using them on every page, only when they work uh, nicely with the rest of uh, the elements. So I'm just going to stick the definition there and I know that this page is the letter F from Fuchsia Flowers. And I'm going to share a fun fact here. In Greece, the common word for these flowers is earrings, just because they look like earrings and they are always hanging upside down. And the third page for my flower alphabet book is ready. I hope you had fun that you got inspired. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.